Hey guys, it's Merce. I want to talk to you about three audiobooks that I really enjoyed that have been in my library for years. I was in a reading slump for a really long time. I'd say a couple, more than a couple years. I just could not. I was so busy with work and just, um, I, I was a musician, so I was traveling a lot, so I just didn't read that much. Like I was reading like maybe two books a year. But audiobooks were something that helped me out significantly, especially when I was driving cross country or I was flying or I was, you know, if I'm working, I do graphic design, so I just put a book on and I just work and I listen and it's awesome. Really, and it really makes, a, if I'm working on something that's kind of more mechanical, it just makes it a little bit more easier and definitely more interesting. Okay, so let's talk about the first audiobook. It's called A Sudden Life by Garth Steen. And this is set in 1990s Seattle. Our main character is Trevor. He's a 14 year old boy. And he's traveling with his father, Jones, to their ancestral home, the Riddell House. And this Riddell House is sort of nestled somewhere in this like really beautiful wooded forested preserve. Um, and living in this house is Jones's sister, Serena, and their father, who is suffering from dementia. The reason why Jones is taking his son back to this place is because he wants to put his father into a home, sell the land, sell the house and all of its assets, and then be able to take the profits, splitting it with his sister, um, home to his wife who they are having these marital problems and he's hoping that this is gonna mend their relationship. His sister Serena also wants to sell the house, also wants to get her father into a, 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 a old person's home because she's, she's really exhausted of taking care of him. And she's been having to do it for her whole entire life. Um, Jones had left when he turned 18 and just never came back. So she's exhausted. She's just like, I can't do this anymore. You know, you left and left me in this situation. You have to help me get, me get him out of here. And then, you know, we can have money and do what we want. And Trevor is sort of caught in between all of these relationships. His father and his uh, sister Serena have a very strange relationship that Trevor doesn't really understand. It doesn't make sense to him why he would just be meeting his aunt for the first time. Um, he's never really heard anything about her, never met her before, as well as his grandfather and as well as his mansion. How did they get there? How, how are these relationships so, so broken and so strained? You know, so he's trying to figure those out. And at the same time, the house is opening up to him. The house is opening up secrets and, and has desires and, and wants to share things with him. Um, and it does this in a very variation of different ways. And Trevor is completely hearing this call and, and exploring that. One of the things that make, makes this audiobook great, of course, is the voice actor. Um, the voice actor for this one is Seth Numerick. You might know him as Ben Talmadge um, on Turn in Washington Spies. If you've seen that show and you've heard his voice, it's very similar um, in this performance as well. Uh, it's very soothing, it's easy to listen to, it's, it's well acted. He's very good at expressing the, the tone of like, you know, when you're 14 and, and some of the, the ways that you express um, humor or stress. I did like that this was set in the 1990s. Um, and it's, it's this interesting time because it's like right before all of the technology and smartphones and stuff like that. So Trevor is having to sort of understand this house and discover this house in an old fashioned kind of way. Um, so he does like go to the library and stuff and you do see these little hints of the social politics, sexual politics in Seattle in the 1990s. Briefly, it's not heavier. You just, you know, you just kind of get a little bit of a, a touch of it here and there. So if you're looking for a supernatural story, ghost story, that's told really well, it's really nice to listen to. Perfect for a drive. Okay, this next one is one of my favorites. I love this audiobook so much. I've never actually read the book, um, but the audiobook, I have it. I When I'm kind of feeling down and I'm feeling kind of lonely, I, I listen to this audiobook because it is so funny. <laughs> 
and the acting is so good. This one is extremely entertaining. Um, I'd say that it's a little bit more of like a radio, uh, radio show performance for me. There's only one voice actor, but it's so good. This story is about a man named Ben. He's 38 years old. He's a father of two, um, and he's on a business trip. And I feel like it's like Connecticut or something, but I can't remember. But he goes on this business trip and he stays at this like old dingy hotel, you know, where like everything is kind of covered in dust. Nothing really works. There's nothing there for entertainment or comfort at all. So he has some time before a meeting that he needs to go to. So he decides to go for a, just a quick hike in these woods behind the hotel. And of course, of course, he goes for this hike, and he gets lost. Um, and he he start he finds himself in this very surreal and absurd world, you know. And the more and more he gets into this world, it's like the more kind of absurd that he gets. Early in the book, he finds a companion, and it's a crab. And this crab is like the crankiest, saltiest crab. This crab is hilarious. He's my favorite character in the whole entire book because he's just always talking shit to Ben, calling him names, and, and just, it, it's just really hilarious. Like, I don't want to ruin it. It is so funny. So he, Ben also meets a variety of characters, and, a, and also we have a, um, a lot of um, time changes here. So things seem to be going backward and forward in time. These characters also remind me a little bit of Alice in Wonderland, a little bit of Don Quixote, just to name a few. It's not a horror book, it's not supernatural, but it is <laughs> really hilarious and entertaining. Christopher Lane is the voice actor for this, and you probably know him from Audible because I think he does a bunch, a bunch of books there. Um, and I've heard a few other ones, like I think he did The Elementals, I listened to that one, but this one, oh man. He just nailed it. He, he so nailed this character. You know, Ben is sort of like, you know, he's sort of like your every dude, you know? He's just, he's just your, you know, your guy next door. Um, so he, <laughs> when he becomes frustrated and when he becomes, when he's just finding everything to be too much and he's losing his mind and, you know, he, the Christopher Lane is just expresses that so well in the dialogue. He's amazingly funny. And it, it's pitch perfect. It's so good. And I don't even under, I don't even remember how I got recommended to this audiobook. <laughs> this is not something I would normally uh, listen to or read, but it is so good. And the other thing that's really interesting about this book, it's genre bending. We have a lot of different things going on in this story. But you know, there's fantasy, there's surrealism, there's a little bit of sci-fi in there. There is a little bit of horror in there. There's uh, definitely like a little bit of magic. So it has a lot of different elements that are happening that make it entertaining, funny, interesting, and, and just something that I think as you're listening to it, you're just going to be giggling to yourself. And, and really, it, it'll allow you to vividly imagine it because it's so well written and it's also so well performed. Okay, so this last one is, it's not a supernatural tale, it's not horror, it's not funny, but it's damned good. Uh, it's called The Devil All the Time, it's by Donald Ray Pollock. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a raw and naked depiction of rural Ohio and Virginia through a series of people who exist and thrive and survive in the darkest places. Um, and all of those lies become intertwined and they are intertwined in depravity, in desperation, in loss, um, and in worship. These, this time frame in the book uh, goes from World War II at the end of World War II to the 1960s. Uh, it does take place from the uh, east and the west coast of the United States. Um, the, I'd say, I think, I really loved all of the characters. They're really gritty. 
they're raw, they're naked. Um, but the, 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 the couple that I think was really intriguing for me, even though it was very, like they're very, they're a very repulsive <laughs> couple, um, there is a serial killer couple who travel up and down the United States uh, killing and uh, their relationship and their um, characters are, they are vile, but um, uh, mesmerizing. So they were my favorite, I think, characters in this book. There was also um, a, a revival preacher who used insects, like spiders and stuff to you know, um, give the fear of God to the to the people attending, <laughs> who has a sidekick, who is his cousin, I believe, um, and he has like no legs, but he's like this guitar virtuoso. And there's also a a young man um, who's orphaned as a child, who we meet as a child in the beginning of the book, whose parents are. Um, well, his mother dies, and then his father dies, and he's just left by himself. Um, and he grows up to be this, you know, pretty decent dude, but he, because of this loss, and because of this, these, these horrible experiences he had with his parents' death, he's, he's looking for violence to, I think, quench that thirst, to, to uh, put his loss to bed. So it's very interesting. Um, there's a lot of other sub-characters. Um, I, I think what's really unusual and interesting about this book is the dialogue is uh, very um, uh, uncensored. It's written very naturally. So it doesn't come off as eccentric or it doesn't come off as sh like someone just writing this to be shocking. It feels very real. And I know that the author, he uh, based this story around his hometown. So I, I think I can uh, assume that he based a lot of these, um, maybe like some of their habits and some of the way they speak or something like that, he probably based that on people he knew because it really does come off that way. It comes off so real, so real. I will say that th this book is um, not for it, it's gonna trigger some things in some people. So if you have some type of trauma, um, sexual traumas, violent traumas, um, uh, this might be upsetting for you. So I wouldn't want you to be, to put yourself in this position because um, even for myself, I do have some some baggage, like we all do, and there are things there that were hard for me. You know, um, so just saying. It could be something that's upsetting. So the narrator, Mark Bramhall, is also an actor for TV and for film. So he brings his acting chops, obviously, into this. And, you know, this is not his first rodeo, so he knows what he's doing. Um, and it's very, very obvious. He is able to give character and texture and life to all of these characters. He just is really talented with accents. He's just nailing like these, this variety of uh, rural accents. He's also really good at just uh, emphasizing certain things in, in dialogue uh, that they're really getting it through. Um, he has really good pacing. Um, yeah, so uh, Mark Branhall. Oh, he was also uh, just recently in as an actor uh, in Edible Creation, which I really liked. So, I, you know, Okay, just, that, that's another thing. Okay, this book is fucked up. Just like I was telling you previously, it's fucked up. It's fascinating, it's disgusting, and it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful in the way that a, you know, rotting dead body can be, you know, where you have these varieties of textures and colors and consistencies and stuff. I think what I wanna definitely say with this is that this story will make a home in your brain. It will take a seat, you know, it'll just make itself at home. It's gonna light up some cigarettes. It's gonna put these cigarettes out on your face and then take off its clothes. And, and that's what it feels like. <laughs> it's sort of like this violation, you know, because everything that is happening in this book is just, just 
all kinds of stuff. It was just flashing before my eyes. You're gonna feel unsettled afterward. It's gonna stick with you. You're probably gonna have to rectify a few of these feelings that you might have. The New York Times also said that this novel was sickly beautiful and as it is hard boiled and that is 100% true. So if you like true crime, you're probably gonna like this just because it's sort of in that in that playing field, even though this is all fiction. If you ever saw the film Last Exit to Brooklyn or if you read the book, it was Harry Trilby Jr. who wrote it. I don't know if that's right, I'll have to look it up. Um, it's similar in that feeling. So anyway, devil all the time. All right, so thanks so much for watching if you made it this far. Um, if you have any recommendations for me, let me know. I'll put them in the comments or send them to me on Instagram. I would really appreciate it. And I hope you have a really great week and I will talk to you next time.